Hi, this is Phil Cook from Simply Rhino. In this video, we're going to look at some of the improvements in Rhino version 5 that are particularly useful for visualization and presentation in architecture and its related industries. When we're working in perspective mode, and particularly if we have a lens length that's quite wide, then fairly obviously I'm going to have some distortion of the verticals. I can now overcome this with the new two-point perspective mode in Rhino V5 and just like an ordinary perspective viewport I can change the lens length so that I can minimize the distortion in perspective mode whilst maintaining my verticals. We've looked previously at the rendered shadows mode in another short video, but there's a couple of interesting options in this mode that may appeal to architects. First of all, if we go to the rendered shadows options, rather than using the rendering material, we can override the rendering material with just a single object color. This allows me to create a visual which is much less about the materials used in the building and more about its formal qualities. I've now brought in some more geometry and switched back to showing the rendered materials. Next I'm going to go to my Rhino options and you'll see now we have a new rendering section here and I've now inside here got the control to turn on the sun and I can set the, the sun um, for a particular location, in this case Madrid, and I can set it for a particular time of day and calendar date. And I can apply that. And we'll now see that our shadows match our sun location. To add more illumination to this scene, we can add in another feature, which is the skylight. This looks over bright in the rendered shadows preview, but if we actually render out the image, you'll see that the exposure looks correct. And here's the final image with the nice sharp shadows from the sunlight. Once I've moved the camera inside the building, again the skylight option can be useful. In rendered view, my view is OK, but when I switch to rendered shadows view, because there's no light entering the building, I need some additional illumination. And I can do this easily by going to options, turning the skylight on, and I've now got my illuminated view. Another new option inside Rhino is in the Rhino render options. This is using Rhino's own built-in renderer. And now I've got the option to add an environment to this scene. So I'll create a new environment here. And I'm going to add an HDR image in the background of a sky. I can set the projection here of this image and perform some other editing to it. I'll just select that for the moment. And you'll see now that my HDR is influencing the colorization of the scene uh, as well as giving me a background. If I pan around here, you'll see this background is projected correctly. Now, of course, at the moment, my sun location here doesn't match the shadow direction, but I can go back into my options here edit the environment, go into the image and I can change the azimuth direction here which moves the sun to the center of the image here and 
Now my son seems to be a little more correct. Let's take a look at a render of this again inside Rhino Render. And here's the completed image. Again, something else that's new in version 5 is the frame buffer window that we have here. And this now gives us the opportunity of, for example, editing the, or changing the exposure by changing the gamma here. And I can also add some post processing effects here. For example, depth of field. Which I can get to the properties of. Pick where I want my sharp area to be. And you'll see sharp around here, blurred beyond it. So some nice quick effects here that we can use inside the basic Rhino render.